there, YouTube. We're back again for more of our Gen Con Bonanza Explosion Blood coverage. We're live at Gen Con 2018. Thanks in part to these spectacular companies right down here who helped donate some stuff to help send us here. Huge thanks to them. And of course, our sponsors, Tasty Minstrel Games and Minion Games. Be sure to click on those links and show them some love. Right now, I'm here for my Thursday recap. All the things that I did on Thursday, the first official day of Gen Con. We got a lot to talk about. We got games to talk about, games I interviewed, games I demoed, and a controversy of brewing. So, uh, pretty cool stuff right there. Somebody was assaulted. I guess it's not a controversy, that's just a thing. People getting hit. But, anywho, let's start it off. So, the people we had a chance to interview uh, were. AEG, we learned about a whole bunch of the new AEG titles, which is cool. Uh, the one that really interested me was Scorpius Freighter. It's this upcoming game where you're going to have your own little spaceship in front of you, and you'll be upgrading your spaceship, flying around the galaxy. Uh, there's going to be police that are going to start noticing as you're upgrading your ship. Looked like a really interesting game coming out later this year. Um, also, Captain is Dead, War Chest, uh, they had the a dice game, they gave me review copies of all those ones, so I'm super excited to check that one. We talked to Mythic Games about Solomon Kane and Reich something, uh, that's what he wrote down here, I think it was Reich Monsters or Reich something, uh, <laughs> Reich something, miniatures, they're miniatures games, you know, move fancy stuff around, cool. Uh, next, we talked to Weird Giraffe Games about uh, three of their games. Actually, two of their games, and then I screwed up one of the takes because I didn't have my microphone on, which right now I do. That's spectacular. The, uh, the They had a Fire in the Library game, which interested me. It's a really cool-looking push-your-luck game. That's Weird Giraffe Games. Talked to Fallen Dominion Studios about a new expansion, for the Outriders Trading Post. It's a smaller box expansion for... Um, their game, which is eluding me at the moment, but it's spectacular. So yeah, check it out, Fallen Dominion Studios. They only have one game. It's a great sandbox style game. Really liked it. Talked to Jellybean Games about show and tile. It's this one where you're going to take tamagrams and, you know, make them look like stuff. Uh, it looked like a pretty fun family game. Uh, and they had three new games coming out that are for family style games, Hidden Pan and Ninjutsu Brains. One of, uh, two of those are based off the Scuttle uh, game engine, which uh, I like. USAopoly, talked to them about some cool stuff. They got the Samurai Jack game, which I uh, didn't really get that much of a feel on, but it had really gorgeous painted miniatures in it. Um, they weren't the, the nicest produced, I don't think, but still, they're nice, really nice looking painted miniatures. Uh, Blank Slate, Party Game, Fantastic Beast, Perilous Pursuits. That's, that one actually looked pretty cool. That was a cooperative dice rolling game. I should have asked them for a review copy of that, because they gave me a couple things to review. And then Mortars of the Dead, which they pretty much pointed as it's dudes on the map. Dudes on a game map. It's got miniatures. Uh, Mourners of the Dead, I mean, there, there you go. It's about dead people or something. I, I didn't really get the theme. You do 35 interviews, it kind of all just kind of goes together. We got Battle Bosses from Kest Games, which, uh, actually that one looked pretty cool. It had a whole bunch of big miniatures. A lot of miniatures, but a lot of miniature stuffs. Enoka, fancy artwork, light card game, Fruit Ninja, Combo Party, Lucky Duck game. This one actually looked like an interesting take on Jungle Speed. That one, uh, I would be interested in knowing more about. And actually, I think they sent me a review copy in the mail, so yeah. Um, one of the ones that really intrigued me was Mutants, an upcoming one from Lucky Duck Games. It is a deck building game, but the thing that really intrigued me was the fact that you have your own personal biro that only you can buy and you draft the cards that are going to go into your biro at the beginning of the game which sounds like a really cool concept they also had some other stuff where you know you're gonna be putting things in different zones and check out the video it looked like a really interesting deck building game if you're still in those deck building games as I am uh, we talked to soaring rhinos uh, shifting realms it's actually a game from the guy that made hero scape yeah hero scape so uh, that game actually looked pretty cool too uh, you know check out the video. Pirate Tricks looked like a really interesting trick-taking game where it was more about the skill as opposed to the cards you dealt, which loved that. Talked about Brook City, a miniatures uh, campaign-driven game about 80s caps, and doing 80s cap stuff for Blacklist. Talked to Stonemaier Games about My Little Scythe and Rise of Fenris. My Little Scythe, Bowers Best Seal, probably my family game of the year. Definitely check that one out. Rise of Fenris, 10 out of 10 from Tom Vassell, which he does not do very often. Uh, we talked to Gameland Games about the brand new Epic Zombies. We actually got a copy of that. I'm excited to check that one out. And Epic Mechs, which looks really stinking cool. Where there's actually going to be mechs and you're putting your dudes in there and you're going to be able to attach guns and swords to your mechs. That one looked really stinking neat. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle from Coffee Cake Games, which I thought was going to be released here, but actually it's coming to a Kickstarter. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, what? Uh, Helvetic, we got a game called Top Spin and Team Up. Eric was really excited about Team Up. I kind of zoned out on it. Looked like a Tetris style game. Uh, that By that point, I was like, uh, yeah, abstract strategy. I'm out. But Top Spin, this really cool game where you got to spin a top 
and knock balls into little holes. It looked stupid simple. It looked like the kind of thing you play at Cracker Barrel, but hey, I love Cracker Barrel. Uh, you know what? I like Cracker Barrel. Let's not go too far on the Cracker Barrel love there. Next, we've got Mirror Box. They got Chaosmos the Temple. Actually, it might not be for Mirror Box. I probably shouldn't have tagged Mirror Box because we're looking for a publish, publisher, but it's an expansion to Chaosmos by Joey Vigor, joeyvigor.com. Make sure to drop that. Uh, Joey Vigor, at Joey Vigor on Twitter. He likes his last name a lot, which, hey, I like the last name Vigor. Vigor's a word, right? Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> Bauer. Bauer is a weird, but it starts with a B-A, so forget Bauer. Continuing on, we got Holy Grail Games. They, man, they had some really cool looking games, artwork wise. They had Titans, which was like this huge 3D arena, but it's not coming out until 2019, but it looks super cool. We shot a video with them. Uh, check that one out. And Rally Man, which uh, is a redoing of another game. It looked like a pretty simple racing game. Uh, Van Rider Games, they got Bayam, which is a game, but it's also in their graphic novel Choose Your Own Adventure series. This one looked really cool, but they're in the process. It's already been translated to English. They're going to be bringing it out, I think, later this year or maybe quarter one next year. Looks really stinking cool. A family Choose Your Own Adventure graphic novel game. Hype for that one. Uh, new speak inside the box. The last one we interviewed. Really interesting, interesting looking game. Not ex what I was expecting. I didn't get a good feel for the game. It's the last interview of the day, but it's kind of like a what's the word code not code names uh but spyfall s thing where there's a moderator and he's trying to figure out where other people are going and they're going to be using like cryptic uses of words that are on cards and it's got really good artwork and it's about like a sci-fi future where the government makes slums look really good virtually or something i don't know i got a copy of it we'll check it out let you know what we think about it honest opinion of it uh and there we go. I also got a chance to play four games yesterday. Sword Crafters from Adam's Apple Games. Really enjoyed this one uh, for what it was. It's a very light, abstract strategy game in which you're physically going to be building a sword. I was not in the best state of mind at that point due to things and uh, maybe alcohol, maybe whatever. Uh, and so... I don't need that, bro. Uh, yeah, but it was really cool. You build your own sword, wave it around, trying to get points. Simple abstract strategy, and the expansion looked like it added a good deal. Tried the Sagrada five and six player expansion, which, hey, you're gonna add five and six players to the game. I'm all about that. Uh, but it also adds this new, uh, what was it called? The new, new action. Uh, so you're gonna have this little circle that goes on top of your your little your 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 stained glass mirror, and you're gonna roll ten dice, two of each color, put them up there, and then those dice are locked in place. You cannot manipulate those dice unless you know a special tool lets you do it, and you have to play those dice. And instead of drafting two dice per round, you're gonna draft one dice, which really bumped up the difficulty for me. Um, I could see it leading some analysis paralysis, but really cool. I liked it. I think it's like Sagrada, but more difficult. And uh, yeah, it also adds five and six. Players. Tried out Badass Force from Funky Sheep coming to Kickstarter quarter four 2018. This was a really cool meteor version of Coup where you're playing as action heroes like Stallone, that's a terrible impression, and Arnold, and Sarah Connor, and John Claude Van Damme, and Steven Seagal. It's got this really good artwork, and each one of those has like a special action. Think like Coup, and it's, you're trying to load up your gun and shoot other people, and there's like some memory aspects to the game. I really dug the game, so don't be surprised if I'm doing a Kickstarter video of that one, which also, uh, the, the guy said he works with Monolith Games, and he said he would name drop uh, me for, because I guess they're looking for more Kickstarter video creators and that that'd be a real big boom because that's a that's a lot of exposure so i was pretty excited about that just that's the fun thing i love about playing games with people at gen con you meet new people you make new relations love it uh and then last close out the night by playing fireball island fireball do, 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 do. um I really like that one a lot. I, I definitely want it. I think it's a f great family game. And it had these moments, as I, po I talked about this in the video, it had those moments that just seemed like the kind of moments that if you had those moments with your kids, that's the kind of moments you would remember for 10, 20 years from now. And this seemed like the kind of game where if you got it, you'd be playing this game with your kids. You know, at family get-togethers and stuff 15, 20 years from now, which absolutely fantastic. I think they nailed Fireball Island. Absolutely knocked it out of the park. So. That's my Thursday recap. Let's talk about the controversy, and then we will get to my top three games that I've seen so far Thursday and Wednesday. So the controversy is some guy, he's a blogger, I guess he's a magic player. Uh, he probably has some pretty radical opinions, review, uh, radical, well, I, I wanna say radical, because if they're your beliefs, then whatever. Uh, counterculture, like I think, I don't know this for a fact, but he's like far right or something. And he was at a bar, and this guy named Matt Fantastic, allegedly, who is a game designer, he, uh, he actually has some games that I really, really like, 
came up behind him, asked him if he was in fact that person, and then started punching him in the back of the head, uh, according to his accounts, five to ten times. And they posted it all online. They don't have the video of it, but they have like the police report and everything, and it's looking really bad. So yeah, moral of the story, uh, if you're going to punch people, first and foremost, try and punch them in the front, not in the back. Cheap shots are lame. And yeah, come. And the other thing is, man, he, he's the kind of guy who like preaches intolerance or no tolerance, not intolerance, tolerance, where he's like, you know, he's like the, you know, like everybody, everybody should be heard. Everybody should do this. You know, he's got like the gay pride and he's like everybody tolerant of everybody. Uh, but then he punched the person in the back of the head, which, you know, uh, not cool. But obviously we don't know all the circumstances around it, but the police are looking for him right now. So if you see him, I guess. I don't know, post in the comments below or call them or just keep it to yourself. But then again, he wouldn't want you to keep it to himself because he would be one of the kind of people who says you should speak up if you see something bad happening. Oh man, is that hypocritical? You be the judge. Woo, deep hidden, deep cuts on the Thursday recap. Feeling spicy. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's bad, man. It's bad. I mean, you just can't go up and punch somebody in the back of the head. And I guess there were eyewitnesses who saw it and... Uh, yeah, hopefully there's a cool controversy happening today, too. So let's continue onward with my top three games that I've seen so far <laughs> onto some fluffier pieces. So uh, this is in no particular order, but staying from yesterday, I have the Warhammer 40K trading card game. The more I think about it, the more I like that game. It's got a really cool system where you're going to choose your four champions. You're going to choose these four blessings, which are super powerful cards, and you're trying to unleash your blessings by doing specific actions above your champions. Really cool game. Like that one. Excited to play that one some more. Uh, Fireball Island. Yes, that shoots up there. I was just thoroughly impressed by Fireball Island, which is, ha which is really good because their other game that they're actually releasing here, Dinosaur Tea Party, I found really underwhelming. So glad to see that Fireball Island is getting them right back on track. Great family game. Uh, super excited for that one. And then my third game, which is eluding me at the moment, feel like a noob, is... Where the hell is it? Uh, mutants! Oh yeah, the Mutants, that deck builder from Lucky Duck Games. Because just the concept of drafting your own biro just sounds so stinking cool to me. And I'm like trying to picture that into like Dominion or something. Where it's like, oh, we have these 30 cards here, and each one of us is going to be able to draft 10 of these cards or something like that. So, yes. So, Mutants. And, uh, uh, Fireball Island, and the Warhammer 40k. So far, right now, the three games that I'm most interested about. I haven't tried Mutants, but the other two I have got to try them. Really liked them a lot. But there you go. That is my Thursday recap, which is all over the board, which if you watch this channel, you kind of know I am as well. If you're enjoying this Gen Con coverage, please, oh wait, so what's my schedule for today? What can you expect me to talk about in the next episode of Bowers Game Corner do, does stuff at Gen Con? So let's talk about the interviews that I have today. Very excited because we're gonna be interviewing uh, Sit Down, the people who created Magic Maze. They got a whole bunch of new Magic Maze stuff coming out, a spinoff of the game that has like animals, a large stuff. We have Asmo Day, so we're going to be talking to a whole bunch. We're probably going to be talking about stuff about Fantasy Flight and creating, you know, all the companies that Asmo Day owns, which is, you know, like all of them. Uh, Cranial Creations, we're going to be talking to them, and we're talking to Simon today. Man, we're going to have an action packed episode for you tomorrow. Probably assault free, but hey, we'll keep you, we'll keep you up to date on uh, the developments of that story. But there you go. If you're enjoying this Gen Con coverage, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know. Pancakes or waffles? For me personally, uh, waffles. I mean, it's obvious because it's you got the ridges where you can pour the syrup. Duh. But let me know. Pancakes or waffles? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.